Hey and welcome back to Building Dira Flip. My name is Ion and this is episode 36 of a building. This is a page turning open source book scanner. First of all, I have to apologize. I know that wasn't the video since December of last year and that is way too long for me and for you to uh, be comfortable about this, but there is still stuff happening. Very slowly, but stuff is happening and I hope that the pace of uh, progress will improve greatly over the next couple of uh, weeks and months. If you've uh, looked up uh, the GitHub repository, then you might have noticed that not a whole lot was happening there. Actually, no commits whatsoever. And uh, that is because uh, the software team wasn't doing much. I guess they just had other priorities, more important projects, or had to get their life together in these uh, yeah, weird global times of a pandemic happening. So I uh, can understand all of that, but in the end, what matters most to me is uh, the code that's being written and no code was written. So I have been asking around uh, friends and strangers uh, whether they could uh, help me with writing code and because that is not my area of competence. And luckily, through a weird coincidence, I met uh, Trim. And uh, Trim is now with me, and uh, Trim has been coding for the last uh, week or two. And today we are going to implement some changes. The biggest change is, I hinted at it earlier maybe, I think, um, that we're going to exchange the Odroid XU4 as the computational heart of the machine. And this will be replaced by a Raspberry Pi 4. I hope that solves some of the issues. Trim also advocates for exchanging the Arduino to nothing and just using the Raspberry Pi to control uh, the other uh, uh, things. So we are going to try this. I trust him with this decision. And uh, today is the day where we are going to try some of the software that he already wrote. And I have no clue what the state of it is and what features are already there and what we can test today. But I am super thrilled that stuff started to move again and we can get this project uh, hopefully, yeah going again at a fast pace. That would be awesome. So Trim, would you like to, no, would you like me to introduce you? Oh, uh, right. Well. <laughs> like, like to sit okay. next to me. Okay. This is a Trim, and uh, Trim is a software developer. Yeah, Trim is developing uh, his software mostly in uh, JavaScript, isn't it? Yeah. And I think that's a great decision because uh, JavaScript is something that thousands and thousands of people are familiar with. So maybe that will speed up the development. Uh, at least yeah. that's the idea. It's easier for other people to pick it up. Certainly. Let me give a quick rundown of what the components are and what the state of them are, what needs doing and what needs to be done on it and what works already. Uh, I think that's only fair to give a kind of an update after nine months of silence on the project. So um, this is the electronics compartment and here's the Arduino over there. And very likely it'll fly out and we'll do it with the Raspberry Pi instead. So this needs to be done. Then there is still one loose uh, cable end in here somewhere. And that is the pressure sensor that is not yet hooked up. I think it's this one. Are you doing audio? Yes, I'm doing audio. Yes, this is the pressure sensor. Um, but this has never been hooked up to anything. That's something we need to do. The pressure sensor is in the suction box here in the very end and it uh, tells us the inside pressure of the suction box. Why that's important, we're going to get to that. Then, uh, next, yes, here's a touchscreen. And Trim says we don't need it anymore. Trim says this will all be uh, on the web. So maybe I'll make this plate new. Maybe we'll keep it because it's actually cool to have a screen on the machine. I don't know. And maybe I'll make that optional in, uh, in the plans in the future. Uh, put your opinion on that down in the comments, please. So we have the book cradle down here. The book cradle can be adjusted in, th in uh, thickness for the book. So I can move this for thicker books and move it back for thinner books. And uh, this is actually self-centering. So when the suction box or scanning head moves down, then let's put it deliberately a bit off center, then this self-centers itself. So here in the back, you can see the stepper and the stepper drives up and down this box. And next to it, you can maybe see a bit of the counterweight here and the counterweight can you see the counterweight like this? There is so much shit down here. So now you can see the counterweight. And uh, the counterweight moves uh, up and down and weighs about four, four and a half kilograms of uh, just steel. 
let's talk about the scanning head and its function. Inside of the scanning head, we have uh, two cameras, and one camera is mounted on this surface and it points in this direction. And on this surface, we have uh, a camera mounted and it points in this direction. So they shoot the two pages of the book crossed, basically. <laughs> yes, now that the suction box is down, uh, the light will switch on. I don't do that now because it'll look weird on the video. And then the two cameras shoot the picture. And then we move the box up. But while we do that, we suck air through this little slit down here. Because we're sucking air through it, we're creating a partial, not a vacuum, but like an area of low pressure. And in this area of low pressure, these two pages are, and we suck the air out between them, basically, so they stick together like this. And then we move up with the suction box, like this. And then we get an impulse from the nozzle. Oh, the nozzle, let me show you uh, uh, the nozzle. The nozzle is right there. We have moved up entirely, so the two pages are together, and for a brief moment they'll stand here. And in this very brief moment, there will be an impulse from this nozzle, and they'll turn over, and then the box will quickly go back down recenter on the new position and uh, take two pictures and this process continues until the entire book is scanned what works and what doesn't work so the pressure sensor with which i can detect if i have actually two pages picked up because then i will note a drop in pressure isn't hooked up yet the stepper driver here is not working we have uh, a like the driver is intact and it could work, but the driver over here, this component, we haven't yet got it to work because it's a very smart and requires a lot of smarts to get it to work. This type of driver and this contraption actually turned one page and you can see our struggles to get there in episode 30. I'll put it up here in the corner um, about there. And in this episode, we turned one page, but the separate driver was overheating and it was too dumb and uh, too weak. So this needed exchanging. And the, the screen, the display of this, it needs to be turned. Right now, uh, this is up, this is down, and this is right, and this is left of the screen. And we can't turn it. The Odroid do does not give us the ability to do, uh, to do that. Uh, that is bad. And uh, maybe the Raspberry Pi will give us this ability. We'll try. This screen will show the user menu uh, uh, where the user can enter information about the book, its width, this is important, the distance that the box needs to travel upwards until it's free of the page. So this uh, data needs to be entered manually in, in the screen. And uh, then you might want to adjust the speed or uh, other factors uh, for the scanning process. Uh, change if you want to do it automatic or manual. And all of this you could do with the screen, but you could also do with your smartphone. And how does it know when it goes to the bottom? The answer to that, mo there are multiple ways. I hope that the new stepper driver has an information, uh, uh, like has on one pin whether it has uh, uh, skipped the step or how much torque there is yet, because that's one of those smart ones that could do that. Maybe I'll need to get its bigger brother. I don't know. This is a TIC 36 V4. Tell me if that's the right one. And if not, tell me what uh, driver I can get for 12 volt, four amp stepper driver, uh, NEMA 17, uh, that would fit the bill and would give me a torque output or an approxi approximation of that. That would be awesome if you put it in the comments, if you like, or if you know something about uh, that. We hope that we can get uh, uh, this uh, stepper driver to work. And with that thing, we should be able to know when we lost a step. And that, and we only lose step when we have the maximum torque of the subdriver applied. And that uh, happens at the very bottom. And don't be worried, the, the subdriver isn't that uh, uh, strong. And there's lots and lots of friction in the system. And it won't crush the book. It won't destroy anything. It's not that strong. So we can, could safely lose a step just going down. And detect that if we can detect that with this separate driver. Another option to know if we've reached the bottom could be to just continuously suck air through this tube like and, and evacuate this box and as soon as we touch the book that stream should go smaller and thus affect the pressure on the inside of the box and we will certainly experiment with that. There is the question whether there is a delay and how long that delay is between touchdown and the change in pressure. 
And if that delay is too long, then we would be driving too long in the book. Thus, it wouldn't be usable, but maybe it's quick enough that we can actually uh, use that. That's another idea. And the third option is uh, to use um, this shaft. This is the idle shaft of the pulley, and we could put a, a rotational sensor on here. And when the box moves up and down, then we uh, can measure the angle of where we are at. There would be another option to have a closed control circuit, uh, and that would also uh, allow us to know exactly where down is and when the thing stop moving, uh, even though we are still moving uh, the motor. Yes, so um, that's an open issue. All of this arises because, uh, like back in an early episode, uh, this one up here, I experimented with rubber bands and this didn't work out. So I installed the counterweight in uh, this episode uh, and this counterweight removed gravity from the equation of the system. So now we don't know where down is anymore. So we need to know where the suction box is and that makes it all a bit more complex. Uh, but we'll uh, get to it. What else need, need, needs doing? Yes, this is the flutter fan over here. And in episode 30 I learned that the flutter fan is too weak and uh, that this geometry down here, its nozzle, is not optimal. Like this needs to change, this needs to be much more directed. The opening is uh, too big here and needs to be smaller. And this fan needs to be stronger. And maybe I'll just get a bigger one. This is, a, I think this is a 35 millimeter fan uh, or 40 millimeter fan. And maybe I should just go for a 60 millimeter fan with some oomph and have a proper um, fluttering action. Because this fan is there to like um, activate these pages a little bit to blow a little bit of air over the edge here, hopefully uh, fluttering that page a bit and loosening it uh, while going down. And also when the box is moving back up to provide a, a air stream here that um, pages, that additional pages, the second or third page that might or may not stick to it are blown away as well. That's why there is a flutter fan here. So I'll put a 60 millimeter uh, fan there. The shopping list. Yes, I spoke uh, to uh, spoke with Trim, but all of this I2C stuff and in other projects, I found that I2C is a huge pain in the ass. Uh, and Trim said, "No, it's not that bad. You just need to have all your uh, um, I2C components on TRS plugs, the plugs that you use for your headphones on your smartphone. So then you can just." take them apart, plug them together with other modules, with a, a multiplexer or, or with a known to be working I2C host. Is it called host? I don't know. And um, that would make it a lot easier. So I'll get some of those. I'll get uh, some TRS plugs and some cables and, and a multiplexer for that because we'll just hook up uh, the I2C components, which are two right now, which is uh, this stepper driver and the pressure sensor to the Raspberry Pi directly. That's the idea. And we haven't entirely decided on what to do with the relay board. The relay board needs four GPIOs. So maybe there's an I2C board that like does some switching on an, a GPIO. That could be possible. Or maybe uh, we can use some GPIOs of, uh, from the Raspberry Pi directly. That could be possible as well. Um, I think we'll figure that out. So next week I'll buy these components and uh, talk with Trim about how to get the relays hooked up. And uh, then we have a modular uh, system where we can unplug or plug in uh, this or that component and, and, and experiment with that. And that should, in theory, take most of the pain with I2C out of the system. Let's see. Trim says it will. Let's see how much pain he is going to have with uh, getting the components uh, to work. Because the stepper driver actually needs uh, its configuration to be transmitted via I2C, which is uh, I think it's complicated, but he says it isn't. So let's see what happens uh, next week. And in the next episode, um, we'll continue working on integrating the electronic components and the software. And he's going to continue writing software. And yeah, let's hope we are going to get this thing running finally in the future. So Trim, you've been fiddling with the Raspberry Pi over here, this one. What's the state of things? Um, now it has... Um an operating system on it because it was a blank card so it's doing the most important part of my job as a programmer which is installing operating systems look into the camera installing operating systems um so debian raspbian is installed um as well as 
uh, a service to operate as a wireless access point so you can connect to it using your phone or your laptop or whatever um, and access the web service which is running on it as well um, through the front end through your browser on awesome. that network is there a front end already visible? there is can you just actually. switch to it? well I, yes I certainly can that wouldn't be a problem at all mm. there you go. whoa okay yeah so uh, it's come quite a long way no, awesome. it's it's just like uh you know uh, like the shell i've got a service that does image capture um but yeah it's a matter of tying it all together so yeah that should be done next week uh so pretty awesome progress i think for uh today and uh yeah let's call it uh a night and continue as soon as possible Great. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for watching. This was a Liroflip uh, episode 36. And if you're new to the series and this is your uh, very first episode that you are watching, then check out the rest of this longer series. Uh, there is a playlist in my... No, what the fuck am I saying? There is not, not, not my usual line. I have it written down. It's been nine months since I've said this. I've... Ah... Uh... Thanks for watching. If you're new to the series, uh, this is just one part of a longer series where I'm, where I'm showing all my steps and progress on creating an open source page turning book scanner that I call LibreFlip. There is a website and Twitter account and if you're interested in this, check out uh, the GitHub, the website, the Twitter. The links are all in the description. If you uh, found, uh, find this series interesting, uh, then, you, then the thought of subscribing to my channel might have crossed your mind. The button is right there. Have a nice day.